I want to say good morning to you. If you're in the United States, we want to say good evening to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want to thank God first for Jesus Christ and thank God for this opportunity to come to you, amen, on the platform of our own Pastor Pakash and his wife, Sister Pakash, and the Pakash family. We thank God for them and we thank God for what he's doing in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we just want to salute them this morning and say thank God for them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we bless God for what he's done and what he's going to do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you the glory. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. So we come celebrating you on this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in India, we celebrate you. In Dubai, we celebrate you. All the all those on the platform on tonight, we celebrate you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you praise. We give you the honor and we give you the glory in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ of, of Nazareth. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the living God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Everybody say amen. Amen and amen. Good morning again. Good morning to each and every one of you. Thanks for joining this wonderful broadcast this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's a blessing to be here and it's a blessing to lift up no other name but the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. I'm coming from the book of Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And we want to look at Mark chapter 11, verse 22, 23, and 24. Amen. Mark 11, 22. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll be coming from that chapter, Mark 11. Powerful scripture. All the scriptures are powerful. Amen. But it's a powerful portion of scripture. Mark 11. Just be patient with me. Amen. Mark 11, verse 22, 23, and 24. Amen. The word of God is blessed. And I say good morning to you again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mark 11 and verse 22 says, And Jesus answering, answering said unto them. He's answering and he is saying something. Amen. When somebody talking to you and the conversation, uh, it's a conversation, they will say something and you will say something back to them. Many times you're talking to some people and, and they will say things and they ask you, what did you say? And they say, I didn't say nothing. Well, but you just said something, but they didn't say this. What they say, they don't want to really hear what you are saying. Amen. But Jesus, what he, he answered and said unto them, have what? He answered and have faith in God. Well, that bring back to what he, he, he did. The Bible says that in verse 22, amen, in verse 20 says, <clears throat> and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up by the root. And Peter, calling to remember, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is wither up. And Jesus answered and said unto them, he's going to teach. That is why teaching is so important. 
Amen. Teaching is so important. When he was passing by the fig tree, he said something to it. And he went, he went his way. But when he's coming back, it's amazing. Not all the time the direction you take, you will always have to take the direction coming back. But Jesus Christ, amen, for some reason, maybe that is the route that he got to take. So when he passed and he saw the fig tree, it was not bearing fruit. Number one, God expects us to bear fruit. That is why we have to be in season, out of season. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. God expects fruit. The Bible says, the tree that is planted by the rivers of water shall bring forth fruit in this season. That is what it ought to do. It will bring forth fruit in this season. But guess what? This tree, right, was not producing. So Jesus cursed the fig tree. Or the tree supposed to produce, um, it's fig season, but the tree not producing. So when he passed by, Peter now, hallelujah, good, 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 good morning, good morning, brother Dig, Digal, I hope I pronounce it right, Digal, Samarat, good morning to you, pastor. Yes, so when he, when, when he was passing by, Peter brought the remembrance and said, Jesus, and Jesus answered unto them and said, have Faith in God. What he's saying to you and I, we must have the God kind of faith. Amen. And hear what he says. He went on to say in verse 23, For verily I say unto you, For verily I say unto, Verily I say unto you, He's talking and teaching, He's teaching the disciples concerning speaking and using their faith. That's why we don't waste words because words are very powerful. We don't waste words. Hear what he says. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, <clears throat> Excuse me. Be thou removed, and be thou therefore cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but thou shalt believe that what that what what thou, thou shalt believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So the Bible is telling us we have to watch our words. Amen. The Bible talks about words that we speak is either death nor life. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, he said death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they shall love it, shall eat the fruit thereof. As believers, we just don't use words lightly amen we just don't use words lightly death and life is in the power of the tongue and the bible said they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof if we look back here in the book of genesis and we're going to look in genesis and see how god used his words because it's very important amen to see how god did it amen Hear what, this, hear what the scripture says. And in the beginning, God created the heavens still and the, <laughs> something, something is still working. I don't know what it is. Okay, let me get rid of that thing that's working. Amen. Hear what the Bible One says. Moment. What is going on here? Amen. Bless the Lord. Working on that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Look in the book of look in the book of Genesis. 
chapter 1. In the beginning, God created what? The heaven and the earth. How did he create the heaven and earth? Did he, did he build it with blocks? Did he build it, use cement? Did he use wood? How did he do it? How did he do it? Many of us, we are waiting until we get everything in order to start ministry. You don't have to wait for everything. God will give you more on your way even before you start. But you got to start. You must start. You can have an idea, but if you never, if you never put it in action, it will not work. Idea is like having a seed in your hand and don't put it in the ground. Idea is like having water in a glass and you don't drink it. You'll still be thirsty. God wants you to, God wants us to trust him at his word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. We could stop right there. And we could look at this scripture. He created, look, in the beginning, God, he didn't say God going to create the heaven and earth. God created. He created. Rabakataya. God created. God created the heaven and the earth. That is huge. Bill Gates, you think about all the billionaires around the world. They, we cannot match them, up, match them up with God. God created the heaven and the earth. Watch this now. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God. What is the Spirit of God? The Spirit of God is the Word of God. Because John 6, 6, 6, I think it's 6, 6, it says the word is spirit and life. Let's look at that. Because I don't want you to go and say, I see. I want you to go and say what the Bible say. We look at John, da, 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 ba, ba, ba. thank you, Jesus. God is good and his mercy endure it forever. Thank you, Jesus. Look what it says. And God created the heavens and earth. He created it by words. By words. Not with a tool in his hands. God created what Ever God give you to do, use words first. God called you to ministry, use words. Frame it with, frame it. I'm going to show you in the word of God how we did it. Hear what it says in verse 663. It is the spirit that quicken the flesh. It is the spirit that quicken. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I what? Speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. Let's look at this. 
Look at John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, my God. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. How could you get around that? You can't get around it. Look at this. All things were made by God. And without him was not anything made that was made. How we get around that? In the beginning, in the beginning, was the Word. And the Word, the Word was with, with God, and the Word is God. Look at um, um, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. These are very important scriptures. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. One of the things I always say to people, I cannot give you faith, I could give you hope. Faith is self-development. But I could, but if, but look what the scripture says. Because if you show a man faith, you got to show your works. Your works will represent your faith or your words. The words that I speak is spirit and life. Look what it says. Verse 2. For by, the, by, for by it, the elders obtain what? A good report. I pray for you this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you shall obtain a good report from the words that you speak. Because the words that you speak is spirit and life. And Jesus said, I come that you may have what? Life. Amen. Why how do you get life? A life more the word, the words that you speak. If you say you're broke, you will be broke. If you say you're sick, you will be sick. But if you see you, you're, by his stripes I'm healed, you're healed. The words that you speak, they're spirit and life. The words that you speak is spirit and life. And that is the truth. Look what the scripture says. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. We could stop here and go back to um, Genesis 1. And we're going to do that. Let's look at it again. Through faith, we understand. We understand. We understand that the world were framed by the word of God. By the word of God. Whatever God give us to do, use the word of God to frame it. Just like you're building a house, the foundation, the Bible said there's no other foundation laid, but laid is, that is laid, but Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our foundation. Now we have to frame it. Wherever God called you, you got to frame it by the word of God. The Bible says you should decree a thing and it shall come to pass. And that's the truth. There's no other way, no other way, no other way, my brothers and sisters. No other way we can do it. Only one way we know is through Jesus Christ. If you know a next way, let me know. But I know one way, and that way is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ. No other way. Glory to God. So the scripture is saying to you and I tonight 
that they obtain a good report. And then the right is saying, through faith, we understand. If you want to understand, you got to, un you, you got to understand, to, when you get a good report, then you say, I understand. You will never understand what faith could do until you know faith and you speak faith. The words you must come out your word, the words that proceed out of your mouth must be life, not death. Sometimes we go and we say, maybe it might work out. Ain't no maybe in this. It's going to work. Rabbi Kataya, no maybe in this. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. No maybe. Maybe live somewhere else. Don't live by me. Maybe don't live by me. All things are possible to him that believe it. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. That's the word of God. Amen. Listen, you could pull your gun. Listen, you could pull your gun on that word, but I guarantee the word going to cut you first. I'm telling you the truth on this morning. Wherever you're at tonight, I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. Through faith, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. I'm telling you, the world was framed by the word of God. And that's the truth. You want things to change in your life? Speak the word of God. Speak different. Go against what you learn, what you think you know, and use the word of God. That's the way I, that's the way I understand. Everybody talking about maybe work. No, it's going to work. Life is like a vault. Once you know the combination, once you know the combination, water and oil don't mix. Life is like a vault. Once you get the combination, doors will open for you. And I found it a long time ago that I don't have to play around to see what works. I know what works. Amen. I know what works. The Bible said the word of God has already been tested. It has been tried. The word of God works. But you got to work it. The songwriter said, don't give up on God because you have not given up on you. He's able. You ever heard that song? The songwriter said, not me. I'd write the song. God is able to do. He's able to do it. He never fail. Will never fail. You see, we use that song. We sing a song. He never failed me yet. So expecting him to fail. He never failed me yet. Oh, why you put he never failed? Forget about yet. Did God promise you you can fail? No. The Bible says you will do exceedingly abundantly and above all that you all that you can ask or think for the power that's on the inside of you. We don't yet. No, no, no. Yet is not part of my vocabulary. But God didn't bless me yet. No. The Bible tells me I am I am blessed with all spiritual blessing. Every morning I wake up, I'm blessed. All my needs are met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Don't wake up complaining. Wake up rejoicing. 
this is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. When you got that kind of boldness, it attract angels. Amen. You attract angels. The Bible says in the beginning God created. He created. He cre I don't care how I don't care how tough the situation is. Stand on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, having done all to stand, then you stand. But you got to do all that you know what to do. But then you take a stand on the word of God. And that's the truth. Sometimes the last thing we use is the word of God. Because we try everything else, but you got to come back to the word. Because God has a plan for your life. According to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, he has a design for your life. A design. When you build a house, you want an architect. The architect don't build a house. He just sketch the house. But then you have the builder who build the house. And the Bible says, except the Lord build the house, the labor labor it in vain. The architect don't build a house. Is the laborer, the builder, who builds the house. You must see, God will show you your future even before you get there. Let me say it again. Martin Luther King had a dream. Pastor Pakash got a dream. Pastor Samrat, Samrat, have a dream. Pastor B. Pakash, have a dream. Glory be to God. Dr. Greaves, have a dream. Glory be to God. Pastor Paul, have a dream. Glory to God. Pastor King, have a dream. Glory be to God. And I come to let you know this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, sometimes somebody might rise up and kill your dream. But I know somebody who had a, not a dream. And the person who had another dream was called Joseph. You got to learn to dream again in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are some people who are dream killers, but to more this morning, I declare over your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will dream again. God has given you the ability to dream again. Rabba Kataya. I decree and declare over your life this morning. Amen. It's not by might, glory be to God. It's not by power, but it's by the spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I come to let you know this morning that your dream, glory God, your first dream that you had, somebody kill it, but your second dream will work by the power of God. Your second dream. Rabba Kataya. I don't mean to get too, so excited, but I get excited when I'm speaking to my brothers and my sisters. Dream again. Don't let nobody steal your dream. 
My dream is not your reality. My dream is my reality. Let me say it again. My dream is not your reality. My dream is my reality. God, tell me to dream. I don't have to satisfy you by my dream. God will satisfy me with my dream. So God allow me to dream. God allow me to frame my world. Because it's a certain, it's a certain place I have to live. I can't live in no, I can't live in your world. I got to live in the world that God allowed me to frame. Because the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I got to frame it with his words and live inside of that place because there's liberation. Amen. Glory be to God. Whatever God tell me to build, there's liberation. There's provision in it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, I can do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can ask or think for the power that is on the inside of me. And I come to let you know that God Guess what? The God that we serve, he is powerful, not powerless. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm about to close. And we can pick it up next week again. Because we serve a faithful God. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Look what he did. And God was, and the earth was of, and the earth was of, without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the what, the face of the water. What will God do? Look what God did now. He says, and God said, the reason why things not working for you because you're not saying nothing. You're talking. It sounds like faith, but it's not faith. Something sung like faith, but it's not faith. You'll be surprised. You ask some people what they're doing. I'm holding on. Hold on to what? Holding on to what? I hear some things sometimes. I'll be like, that's not faith. Faith is taking God at his word. Taking him at his word. The woman with the issue of blood if I could touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. My God, that is some kind of faith. He had a kind of faith. When the man was saying, listen, you don't have to come to my home. Just speak the words. Why are you saying that? Because the words that Jesus will speak is spirit and life. <clears throat> Everybody don't have to lay hands on you. Everybody don't have to pray for you. All you need is to take God at his word. I'm going to show you something. You should write these scriptures down. These scriptures are embedded in my heart. Embedded. Amen. They're embedded in my heart. We look at Numbers 23. Thank you, Jesus. 23 verse 19. <clears throat> Watch this. Numbers 23, verse 19. <clears throat> Taking God at his word. Hallelujah. Look at this. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man. That's number one. God is not a man. You hear people turn and say, the man upstairs. You see? They don't know. Who, God is not a man. 
Well, the man upstairs, he knows what's going on. Which man? God clear gender right there. God is saying to you, God is not like man. But God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Watch this now. Has he said it? And shall and and shall he and shall be not and shall be not do it or have he hadn't spoken and shall he not make it good let me see if I get it in another version for you because the one might be the one might be too complicated for you so let me find another version for you in the mighty name of Jesus God is not a man God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's not a man. Hallelujah. God is not a man. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. He's good and his mercy endureth forever. Let me find it here. Numbers 23. Glory to God. Numbers 23. We're going to read it out of the, the Message Bible. My God. And you know the message brings it so clear. Watch this. God is not man. One given, one given to lies. And, and not a son of man changing his mind. Does he speak and not do what he say? Does he promise and not come through? Watch this. Whatever God has spoken to you, he will bring it to pass. But he cannot bring it to pass if you don't believe it. You know how many times God gave me dreams and I see it come to pass. You know how many times God gave me a vision and said, tell this one this. And because they don't believe, it don't come to pass. All things are possible to him that believe it. You got to believe this, my brothers and sisters. Because when you believe in it, it's in a different realm. It's in a faith realm. All things are possible to him that believe it. If he say it, would he not do it? You make it good. You make it good. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. We give God thanks and praise and honor and glory on tonight. He's a faithful God. Faithful faithful God. Amen. So I just want to leave this with you on this morning. Sometimes you just got to take some, a job and go. But tonight I just want to say I cannot give you faith. I could share my faith but I could give you hope. hope. I can tell you your tomorrow look great, but you got to believe it. And not everybody's qualified to speak into your life. So this morning, we thank and praise God for what he's done and what he's going to continue to do. The Bible says he framed the world with words. He framed the world with words. God is not a man that he should lie. Somebody say amen. Amen and amen. 
as I close, I just want to thank you for joining me this morning to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Leslie Dundas. Amen. And I thank God for Pastor Pakash allowing me to share with you on this platform. It's a privilege and it's an honor. Tonight I was talking about Pastor Pakash and saying, this is a leap of faith for the man to start a platform and invite so many others to come on the platform. That is a leap of faith. That he trusted God. That he can start a platform and it's for the gathering of men and women of God. And I believe it's going to grow by leaps and bounds. By leaps and bounds. I'm believing for revival in India. I'm believing for an outbreak in India. That India would acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. I decree and declare the same thing that happened to Nebuchadnezzar will happen to any president that sits or prime minister that sit in that seat. We speak over that seat right now in India and we declare that the sitting prime minister, we will hear the testimony of him speaking about Jesus Christ. Because what God is going to do, just like he did to Nebuchadnezzar, when Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach and Bendigo, Father, I pray this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will position men in the cabinet who believe God. Men who are skilled in what they do. Men who will have ears of the prime minister and will speak into his life and he will see the power of God moving and he will not deny it and he will stand in front of the crowd and let people know that Jesus Christ is Lord. If we don't speak it, it will never happen. I pray, watch it come to pass. I will hear testimonies whoever is the sitting prime minister you will hear testimonies because the bible says when you're going to a strong man when you're going to a strong man house we first bind the strong man you can you can, you just don't want to speak to ministers you want to speak to prime minister the seat the seat of authority. Where God change India or God change America. No, we start from the top. Calling things that be not as though they were. Because death and life is in the power of our tongue. Nothing will change if we don't speak. I said nothing will change until we speak. So I pray. Right now, there's a rattling going on right now. We speak to every demon in India right now. Everyone that's trying to assassinate Christians. We speak to those demons and we bind them up. We bind the works up right now by the power of God. India will be liberated. The gospel will be freely be, the freely be, be able to navigate through India by the power of God. I decree and declare that. Watch and see Pastor Pakash. 
the prime minister, the same sitting prime minister, will get up and talk about Jesus Christ. We have to believe that. Pastor Prakash, all you need is two to three men believe in God for India. Go on a 30-day fast and watch how things can turn around in that nation. God will use an ordinary man to do supernatural things. We're not waiting for Benny Hinn. We're not waiting for no other Hinn. We're just taking God at his word. It was Joseph who turned things around in Egypt. I'm telling you the truth. Joseph turned things around in Egypt. Jesus turned it around for the world. God said, I'm looking for one man. One man, not two, one. Pastor Bakash, I declare over your life that you will see things turn around not just in your family for good, but you will start seeing things turn around in India. It will start with the sitting president, prime minister. The sitting prime minister. Remember. Remember this. That the same one that was prosecuting the church is the same one was called to the upper room. I pray tonight, there will shall be an upper room calling in India. We will watch, amen, if the, we will watch the power of God get into the, to the least of the greatest. We pray to this morning, for the Prime Minister of India. We pray that you already position some people there to speak in his ear gates concerning the kingdom of God. I pray it is Joseph who had to interpret the writing on the wall. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that no one in the Hindu faith will able to turn to interpret the writing on the wall, but there will be a man of God who will interpret the writing of the wall. I call it forth by the power of God in the name of Jesus. I declare that over India today. It only take one man from the earth to get him um, heaven attention. And it takes one man on the earth to shake up things because you believe God. He framed the world by his words. India will be reframed. India will be reframed. And you watch and see. Little by little, we get into Pakistan. Little by little, we get into Dubai. Little by little, we get into Afghanistan. Little by little, we get into nations, amen, who would recognize there is, there is a God and his name, and guess what? His name is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. We as believers got to start believing God. Amen. Claiming territory for God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible talks about, we got to speak it. We got to frame it. The Bible says that, guess what? He will frame, we frame it by the word that we speak in the mighty name of Jesus. Pastor Prakash, all you need is two to three guys and watch. you go on a 30 day fast and watch how things are going to turn around. I decree that right now by the power of God. Anyone that tried to raise their hand to persecute another pastor in India, I pray that their hands will never drop. Their hands will wither. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The next person that put their hands on a pastor or put their hands on a believer to prosecute them, to think that they could knock them upside their head. When they lift their hands, it will not come down. That hand will wither and people will know that there is a powerful God. Touch that God's anointing. Do his prophets no harm. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every plan, every plan against Christians in India, it will backfire on them in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, guess what? We get violent, but we get violent in the spirit. Use your sword, believers in India. Use your sword. Use your sword. Pastors, use your sword. Believers, use your sword. The only reason these things are happening because you're not pulling the sword out and you no nice prayer is going to work. As they rise up their hand, it will wither. The next one that put their hands on the believers, they will not see that hand no more. Tonight, this morning, we decree and declare it. Thank you for joining the broadcast. Have a great and wonderful day in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you and good morning. God bless you and God bless your living soul. Good night, Pastor Pakash. God bless you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. It's wonderful and uh, encouraging words you have given in this morning. We blessed in this morning. God has spoken with us through word of God. Uh, thank God for that. Thank God, thank God for you and for your great words. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Until yes, Madam God, we, we blessed. We blessed. Until we rise yeah. in the spirit, we have to. Yeah. God will see. bring. A, yes. God will bring a revival to India and uh, through all of the world in Jesus' name. Yes, but first it start in Jerusalem, Judea, yes. Samaria, the uttermost part of the world. Your Jerusalem, you are in charge of that. Yes. You are in charge of your Jerusalem. You are on the yes. ground. And you have to decree and declare some things. That the next Hindu person that raised their hand on a believer, this hand will wither. They will miss their arm and they don't know who take it off. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. Because we can you can't, it's not a fair fight. Yes. We don't have to pull guns and knives, but we use the word of God. If it, if it could frame, it could dismantle things too. Yes, that, that the dreams, these men, these, these Hindu, Hindu gods that they dream, you, you mash them up by the power of God. Their God will have no strength no more. Every time they raise their hand to fight, they will be feel weak. Every time they open up their mouth, they, 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 they tell them cleave to their mouth. Yeah. Must cleave. We don't play fair. It's not a fair fight. It's a fair fight. It's a war. Yes. Man. It's a war. One day, a guy, one day, this guy told a friend of mine, whatever happened, and he told the man, he said, you robbed me, and you will give me my money. And he said, well, they had an argument. And the guy said, listen, as of today, this business, I shut it down in the name of Jesus. He passed by, and one day he looked, the business shut down. He saw the man in the bank, and the man says, he said, hide him. 
And he says, what well, happened to your business? He says, close. And he said, you didn't believe what I say. Because you robbed me. I decree that this business will never, it will dry up. When God, when God spoke to the fig tree, it dried up. That the God of the Hindus will come to eat from your God. The God of the Hindus will dry up. And now they come to eat from your God. And he prepared a table before. And you must prepare a table for them. Because you're the God. You dry up every resource they have. Yes. Until you will fight fear. It's not a fear fight. This gospel is about prosecution. You might be prosecuted for it. But yes. you know why? Nobody can lift your hand and hit your children. Nobody can lift, lift, lift your hand and hit your wife. Nobody lift your hand and hit your mother. Nobody lift your hand. No, no, no. It's not going to go down fear. It's not going to be a fear fight. It will be war in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth. Somebody got to rise up in India and say, listen, we are going to fight with the word of God. We're going to pull down the strongholds in India in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But these pictures that we've seen, men being hit upside their head, we could do it to them, but we don't fight like that because God is love. But until the Bible says, the kingdom of God suffer violent, the violent take it by force. How we take it by force? We use the word. It is the word. The word of God is quick and alive and powerful. We only get violent in the spirit. The word that we speak is spirit and life. God bless you, young young man. God bless you, sir. Yeah.